Well, everywhere we turn, our, our liberties are under assault. That's what happens when you elect a Marxist. The uh, Beaufort Observer has a story today based on ESPN Outdoors article by Robert Montgomery, and I had that on my pile of things the other day, but I didn't have time to get to it. But you folks, you folks who enjoy the water, need to listen up. They're already going after carbon dioxide, which is, you know, in the air. So they're going after air, which they want to regulate. Now they want to regulate water. Let's see. They want to regulate air. They want to regulate water. They want to regulate your body. They want to regulate energy. How do you like that? Nothing's left. Anyway, uh, they write, it seems that President Obama has a, appointed a group called the Ocean Policy Task Force. The original idea was to plan federal policy related to ocean fishing. But on December 14, 2009, the task force issued its interim report entitled Interim Framework for Effective Coastal and Marine Spatial Planning. Uh Uh-oh. That's broader than oceans. Coastal and Marine Spatial Planning. You can find on page 5 what this framework will affect. Okay, so federal policy will affect what? Well, here it is, page 5. The ocean... Our coasts and the Great Lakes are home to and support myriad important human uses. CMSP provides an effective process to better manage a range of social, economic, and cultural uses, including aquaculture, fish, shellfish, and seaweed farming, commerce and transportation, for example, cargo and ship cruises, tankers and ferries, commercial fishing, environmental conservation, Marine sanctuaries, reserves, national parks, and wildlife refuges. Marine heritage and archaeology. What else would they, would they regulate? Mining, for example, sand and gravel, oil and gas exploration and development, ports and harbors, recreational fishing. Ooh. Gone are the day when dad and son and mom and daughter can go out and fish on the coastal areas without, what, a federal permit? Renewable energy. Wind, wave, tidal, current, and thermal. Other recreation, boating, beach access, swimming, nature and whale watching and diving. Well, what else might they regulate? Scientific research and exploration, security, emergency response, and military readiness activities, tourism, traditional hunting, fishing, and gathering. So the uh, Beaufort Observer asks, did they miss anything? Did you pick up on commercial fishing and recreational fishing? Anybody out there see federal fishing licenses coming? The idea is that another federal bureaucracy would be created by President Obama by way of an executive order that would implement a policy of comprehensive spatial planning of the nation's territorial waters offshore. But on page 9 of the report, we find this as well. Quote, the geographic scope would include inland bays, and estuaries in both coastal and Great Lakes settings. Inclusion of inland bays and estuaries is essential because of the significant ecological, social, and economic linkages between these areas with offshore areas. So it's more than the coastline. It's damn near anything with water. And damn near anything that's done with water. And it would be regulated by the federal government through an executive order. Now that sounds constitutional, doesn't it? Or does it sound like a dictatorship? No, ladies and gentlemen, it is a dictatorship. The Constitution has nothing to do with this. This is an imperial president. Something I've said repeatedly. They they like to call the conservative presidents, the national security presidents, imperial. This is an imperial president. Oh, he's as imperial as they come. And this is on top of a piece we dealt with some time ago in the Examiner, April 2808, new clean water bill is all wet. The D.C. Examiner. With the real estate market already reeling, Congress would be foolish to do anything that would further drive down property values. It'd be even worse to do so while also mounting a wholesale assault on private property rights. But what that's what would be done by the misnamed Clean Water Restoration Act sponsored by Representative James Oberstar, Democrat, Minnesota. His proposal is so bad it ought to be permanently buried six feet under dry land. 
The Constitution gives Congress the power to regulate interstate commerce. The original 1972 Clean Water Act expands that power to regulation of any navigable waters. Remember, we talked about this. Navigable waters with the regulatory authority given to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Little by little, the Corps expanded its reach so that soon was not just maintaining navigability, easy for me to say, but also enforcing environmental regulations and then enforcing them not just on navigable interstate waters, but on ponds connected by ditches to streams. But when the Corps absurdly started trying to regulate low-lying land that sometimes developed puddles that might overflow into those ditches, property right activists fought back. All right, fine. Excuse me. So what do we have here? We have what I started out saying. A government that is so completely and utterly disconnected from the Constitution and the people, so completely out of control, that it cannot and will not restrain or contain itself. It is grabbing liberty and power and private property in every direction and in every way possible. Whether it's health care, whether it's energy, whether it's private property rights, whether it's your income, grab, 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 take, take, take. This is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you are disconnected from the Constitution. We are now a government of men. And it depends what men are in power. If they have no self-control, then their power has no limits. If we adopt the Obama agenda in whole, as I've been saying for months, they'll be back with a new agenda tomorrow. When will it end? It won't. Where will it end? It doesn't. That's the point. We are in a soft tyranny. When we have a president, A president who lies repeatedly to our faces without consequence. When we have a Congress that is strategizing against us, trying to figure out a way to violate its own rules, its own traditions, to impose on us something that two-thirds of us do not want, then we have a soft tyranny. When we have a government by executive order, by czars, by fiat, by judiciary, We cease to be a republic. Sure, they want to control the water and the air and your body and your mind and every damn other thing. And they're doing it. They're doing it by hook or by crook. One day, one day the American people will rise up. Not yet. I'm not talking about the voting booth. One day the American... I'm not even urging this. I am saying one day these pathetic, ideological, incompetent politicians and bureaucrats are going to push the people to the point of no return. And I strongly resist this notion, as a matter of fact. I am simply concerned about it. Because there is such a gap, such a huge gap between the federal government and the average citizen. The people don't like their government anymore. They don't trust their government anymore. They don't want it involved in their lives anymore. And they're right. They're tired of being put down. They're tired of being told the illegal alien who is illiterate, who commits a crime coming into this country, is a better person who deserves more than they do. They're tired of being told that when they come up with a good idea, and bust their butts and work so hard and put everything on the line and start to make a profit that they're millionaires and that they have to give it up. They're tired of being told when they set up a restaurant or a dry cleaner or they drive a truck and they earn a certain amount of money that they're earning too much. And they're tired of being told that everything they do sucks. They're tired of being told that if they work for an insurance company, that they're criminals. They're tired of being told if they work for an oil company, that they're criminals. They're tired of being told if they work for a steel or a coal or an automobile company, that there's something wrong with them. When there's nothing wrong with them. When they're the backbone of this nation. They're tired of being told that the cop in the street is to be feared over the criminal. They're tired of being told... That the military is out of control when in fact the politicians are out of control. The people of this country are sick and tired of what's going on in Washington, D.C. 
And damn it, I agree with you. And then we're tired of being told that there's something wrong with us. That we're rabble rousers. There's something wrong with us. We who uphold the principles of the founding. We who comprehend the dangers that we face. We who work to provide for our families and follow the rules and abide by the law. We who believe that God is the highest power, not the government. That there's something wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with us. We are the heart and soul of this country. We are Americans. And we love this place. And we will stand up to those who seek to destroy it in the name of hope and change. 